Bob Nagy here, AB5N, with another radio review. 13 degrees. That must be dedicated, huh? Well, anyway, you know, we're faced with a lot of radios that are super high-tech these days. They're computer interfaced and all that stuff, and they do all this cool stuff. And you're constantly, you know, fighting COM ports and sound cards. Well, it used to work, and now it doesn't work, and the cat control. And that's not the fun part of amateur radio at all. And, you know, we're sending a lot of money to China, all these little rigs coming in. I sort of like to keep the, more, the money more domestic. And, you know, in the last couple of years, you've seen me review the top shelf radios from the big manufacturers, and you get some good pleasure out of them. I mean, there's a prestige element to those top level radios, and that's fine and everything. But then there's getting back to basics. And John, WA3RNC up in uh, Pennsylvania, he's Pentec, and he makes this super cool radio. And you've probably seen it before. This is the skinny version, TR45. L's, uh, skinny, and then he makes a little fatter version where you can get a tuner and a battery pack in it. And a little lunchbox handle on the top. Let me tell you, this radio, it's so simple. There's no uh, menu system. Uh, you don't need the manual. It's got exactly and only what you need. And it's, it's just fired up, and you're going to see how we operate it. You've probably seen it before. Let's just take a quick look at it, because I tell you, as far as pleasure, and, you know, simple amateur radio pleasure is concerned, this is an excellent radio. And I've, I've radios, what, 10, 15, 20 times the price of this thing. Didn't have as much fun as this one. Well, let's take a look. So let's take a quick trip around the TR45 Lite. If we just start at the left over here, we can see we have your keyer speed. And when you adjust it, you can see it on the screen showing the speed of the electronic keyer. We have record and play memories over here, two of them. And very easy to hit record, it beeps at you, you go ahead and input your, your CW here, have a little keyer here. And that way you can have your CQ in one, CQ POTA, you can have your first reply with your numbers on the second one. And it has quantizing, so it's actually sort of adjusts the spacing a little bit, it's, it's sort of intelligent. Or I've gained that standard deal here. Linear, just no problem whatsoever. You got a notch. Turn it all the way to the right to get it out of the circuit over here. Your VFO is standard deal, except when you press it, you go from 100 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. Pretty handy. Nice feel to it. You got your dial lock, just locks all the controls. Battery check here, you can check in the beautiful analog meter, whether it's up in the red over there. TX power is linearly controlled over here. Um, like I said, on most bands, it's about 7 watts, except for 20, where it's 10 watts. So I keep it this switch in the reverse position for SWR reading, because if you have it in forward switch, it's a 5-watt meter. It'll sort of bang up at the top. Having 10 watts on 20 meters, I like that. And if it's over, uh, you know, I can't remember what it's 2 to 1 or so, you'll see this LED start to blinking on the SWR, sort of a warning thing, which is nice. Standard, you know, two-line display over here. I believe it's 16 digit. What's nice is you've got your RIT up on the right over here, where if the guy's a little bit off, hit it. And hit it again to take it out of circuit. Bada bing. Now your receive modes are pretty straightforward here. You've got CW narrow and CW wide. But when, when it's in narrow, you can also hit an audio filter in line over here and tighten it up even more. Audio filter out. Wide. And if you hold it down, you can go to SSB mode. And it feels like those CW wide and SSB are about the same, but you can tune up to the uh, sideband and take a listen to that. I'm going to put it back in CW mode over here. You got your band select here. You just rotate right through the bands. 20 meters, 18 megs, down on 80, 40, 10 megahertz, back to, to 20, and it just cycles through. You've got two uh, VFOs, which we've gotten used to these days, so you can hit your A and B over here. And you have, you know, the QRP frequency in one and something else in the other one. Your master power switch, no big whoop. Um, the speaker switch over here is rather interesting. It's uh, I guess it's sort of sort of hidden under there to speaker on and off. What it allows you to do is to use headphones, but you can turn the speaker on and off at the same time that the headphones are plugged in. It's sort of keen. And on the left of this analog meter is a uh, dim switch. So if you're out in the sunlight, now you can pop it up a little bit like that. Um, 
Your headphones go to the bottom right. It's nice. It has two inputs for your key, a straight key and paddles, two different ones. So you could, you know, you can have either one going on. You could put a straight key in there and key down for tuning up or whatever, something like that. Um, on the right-hand side of the rig, you got your antenna connector, power connector, and uh, you have the CW side tone adjuster. So that's sort of nice. That's a, a newer addition over here. This is a rotary pot. Uh, it is set up so you turn it towards you for a higher uh, tone. The speakers in the back, of course, the thicker version of this, the regular version, has a handle on top like a little lunchbox, and you can get it, get it with a tuner and battery pack in it for extra charge. But there you go. Everything you need and nothing you don't need. And the big attractor here is this gorgeous analog amber-backed meter. I mean, there's just something about seeing that thing go up and down. About the only thing you wouldn't pick up without reading a manual is that on your VFO A and B over here, if you hold the button down for about two seconds, it memorizes it in that VFO. So tune around, put your favorite one in there, hold it down, you see the screen blink for a second, bam, that means it popped it into the VFO A memory. About the only thing I could say negative about this radio is the price. Yeah, it's priced like an American radio would be priced. It's not inexpensive. But, boy, what you do get is so worth it, and the amount of pleasure you get is, makes it really worth it. So I give it, uh, you know, two thumbs up, buy and hold rating, and, uh, you know, check out John's website, WA3RNC, for more information on this. I think you'd be really pleased to own one of these.